old school bodybuilding clothing company. If it's been three and a half hours since you last ate protein, and now you're starting to freak out, you are old school. If watching someone sit on a hammer machine for five minutes between sets playing with their phone pisses you off, you are definitely old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. periodization explain to our audience what you're talking about uh, periodization is just like making sure that you're and this is like you can apply both nutrition and and uh training to this just making sure that they link up in such a fashion that your first this phase of training is making sure that this is setting up this phase of training which is setting up this phase of training so it's a sequential order to make sure that you get the most out of your training and dieting so that when you get to the competition uh you can perform your best or look your best or whatever it may be so with hypertrophy training, you know, lower volume periods might actually resensitize you to higher volume periods, which you can then run for multiple periods at a time. But that sequential order there is just what is called periodization. And it's for your, the actual application of periodization to hypertrophy training was super intriguing to me because nobody had done it. Right. And, and what, what I, and it's funny because when people ask me about different training systems and, and techniques, and it, it, do I like them? And I always say yes. And they're like, but yeah, I thought you like low volume, you know, high weights. I said, well, that works best for me. But I like changing the training because if you do the same thing all the time, a lot of times your body gets used to it and then you don't, you don't respond anymore. So it's good to right. implement other training systems. You're going to find what works best for your body, but it's good to change it up, like, you know, from sure. now and again to shock your body because, like you said, your body gets used to doing the same thing all sure. the time. Sure, and that's... So those types of like layman things that you're saying were things that I heard growing up and I read in the books and uh, magazines. And I was just like, you know, I think there's more to that. So let's mm -hmm. figure that out. And it's like you're saying, like you apply. And fortunately, we have a system. You apply as many of these principles to your training as you can, whatever you know, whatever's best. So like a lot of the guys back in the day were like progressive overload, even if they didn't know exactly what it meant, they right. kind of got the right onto right. the right pattern. Right. So it was like. If you can apply a set of principles to training, just like you do your finances or just like you do to, you know, picking up women or men, whatever it is, there's a, there's a, there's a system to everything. So it was like, what is the system to hypertrophy training? How can we optimize it and how can we make it better? So applying, you know, uh, making sure that it's really specific, making sure that you're uh, overloading, making sure you take fatigue management periods, making sure that you add variation into your training whenever you need to. Right. It's just all, all that leads into sports periodization. Mm -hmm. And now is and, there a uh, way, have you defined it? Have you laid it out in such a system that, you know, you make, is it yearly cycles? Is it every <laughs> three months? Is it every six months? How do you periodize the training aspect sure. of it? So in sports science, that's uh, you're talking about a macrocycle or like a macrocycle plan, annual plan, right. macrocycle, mesocycle, microcycle. So microcycle is a week long period. Mm -hmm. uh, mesocycle is the entire training uh, period where you kind of increase your volume and then you deload. So that's it can be what we call like a four to one paradigm, which is four weeks of accumulation, right. a week of deload, five to one, six to one, whatever it is, depending on like their advancement. The macrocycle is a uh, multiple mesocycles stacked together mm -hmm. um and that can be the majority of your periodization there so like if mesocycle one was that resensitization phase where you're doing lower volumes so that mm -hmm. way the high volume stuff helps you grow again then that's like the macro cycle consists of a maintenance and three massing blocks or three massing phases mesocycles and then these three mesocycles of just massing are what's called a training block and so it's like, we have a book that explains all this stuff. It's the scientific principles of hypertrophy training. Mm -hmm. um, we just put, we just put it out like uh, early this year or December of last year. I believe. What, what's it called and where is it available? The scientific uh, principles of hypertrophy training. And it's available on the, our website. And I can give you the link to that. What's the website? We'll, we'll, I'll, we'll pull it up right now so people can see it. What's the website? Yeah, so renaissanceperiodization.com. Say and it again. The, Say it one more time. 
RenaissancePeritization.com. So it's RenaissancePeritization.com. Yeah. Okay. I have a reason on my shirt. There you go. Renaissance He's got it right on his shirt there. That's great. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, just I want to just say this, and like this is what I do best. My best thing is my what I do best is explain things simplistically. It sounds it sounds very complicated because in your mind, this is like second nature because you you've written the book, you've done it all. It's not that complicated if you look at the book and you see how he lays out the different mini cycles. There's a reason by, behind everything you laid out, and it's, it's obviously from your tried and true you know, training techniques and then also through the science of what you're doing that you laid this out. And it, you know, everyone has to try it out and may have to modify it to their own body type, but the idea, I think, behind this, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, is to constantly have your body guessing so that it's not acclimating to what you're doing and then you're getting stagnation periods. Is that correct? Uh, somewhat. So there is a there is what's called directed adaptation. So with directed adaptation, you do have to do things sequentially in order for your body to adapt optimally to it. Mm -hmm. So if you can keep variations like squatting and benching or whatever your favorite variation is, if you can keep that in for two to three months at a time, right? So you can really see progress with it, which is what progressive overload is. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. And then after that, you can move into like uh, a new variation or if it's time for you to do a lower volume period you can do that and like you know i could sit here and, and explain everything over the course of a few hours but it would it would take yeah hours. obviously I'm, I'm asking you to kind of summarize it let people buy the book if they want to get the whole yeah, basically gist of it. what i would start with is just learning that everything uh works with sets of principles and those we have five minute lectures on each principle on youtube okay. and that's the renaissance periodization youtube right um there's actually little what are they called where you go in and you we have them all grouped together in different areas so gotcha. there's dieting there's uh, training and then there's just like the regular videos that we have doctors get on there and talk about stuff and okay so there's a lot of good educational happen, material so. if people want to check it out and go yeah. through the videos is what you're saying That's yeah something. tons tons and tons i highly suggest it it's really cool because even if you think like science is bullshit, you can still apply principles to your training and that's still science. So, yeah. you know, you can continue saying science is bullshit, but you're still yeah. applying principles. That's just people who are ignorant say that because we all know <laughs> that, look, it's one big, I always say life is one big chemistry experiment. It's just a matter yeah. of, uh, because people always ask me, hey, you know, uh, I want to get my wife pregnant. The doctor says from all the anabolics I use, I'll never be able to do it. I said, it's just one big science experiment. I have three kids. I said, <laughs> you come to me, I'll tell you how to do it, you know. So <laughs> you've just, you know, you've basically broken it down. Now let me ask you this question, because this is interesting. How does a guy who's got all these degrees in college, who's interested in bodybuilding, okay, and we're going to talk about your, your, your pro card win in a minute. How do you get a job that basically allows you to do exactly what you like and get paid well? Where did that come about? Yeah, so um, Dr. Mike Isertel, who you'll see in most of the, if you pull up the YouTube, he's doing a lot of the lectures for the, for the YouTube. Okay. Um, he was my professor during my sophomore, junior year, I believe, at UCM. So he randomly came there for some reason. He was at East Tennessee State getting his PhD under Doc Stone, wow. who actually does a lot of research on sports periodization, and I read a bunch of his shit. Uh -huh. So when I learned that Mike was coming to my university, I was like, oh, wow, this is awesome. There's no coincidences actually, in life, believe me. Trust me. Yeah, it was, it was a bunch of just crazy events that led up to it. You know, it was really cool. There's no coincidence. So I saw, yeah, I saw he was coming. I was like, oh, this is great. It was actually the same year that I started a uh, scientific training and dieting association for mm -hmm. the university. Wow. Uh, I had like 30 members. It was awesome. Ooh. And uh, I needed an advisor for the group. So the first day I saw him uh, in the gym and I was like, hey, do you mind being the advisor for my group? would be awesome. And uh, immediately was like already doing stuff after class. So that way it was like. You guys you know, clicked in other words, yeah. Yeah. And then I learned that he, you know, had this company and never did I think I'd work for them either. Uh, sure. It was just kind of, I wanted to learn a bunch of stuff. That was it. And day one of class, I believe I disagreed with him on like three or four different things. He's like, I want that kid. That's the guy I want now. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, you know, you don't get impressed by the people who, who kiss your ass and parrot everything you say. And I just, right. I just was never that person. Like I, yeah. like, again, it was the, probably the male authority thing. Like I just didn't look to male right. authority. I was like, I don't, I think you're wrong, man. I, I don't know. About right. That. You know, it's funny because when I teach my uh, secrets of becoming a diet guru course, the people who ask the most questions, um, I love that because I, you know, when I teach something, I know I, I own the material pretty well in my mind. So I, I know that I can answer most people's questions. Very rarely do I get yeah. stumped. But I like the people who, who ask the, the challenging questions because it means they're thinking 
on their own. You know what I mean? They're not just exactly. absorbing things. They're kind of like taking it, they're making it their own, and then they're wondering why things are happening. And, and those are the people who tend to go the furthest, you know, I find. Yeah, 100%. And it's cool because it challenges you too. Yeah. Because if, there might be gaps in your thinking that you, you, you missed. Absolutely. I'm you always learning. Something up, you're like, oh shit, never thought of it like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I guess I just uh, impressed him enough that he uh, – talk to his business partner and they're like both CEOs of the company, but Nick Shaw is the CEO of RP mm -hmm. and then him and Mike started it together. So he talked to him and then they wanted to hire me out of undergrad. They were like, listen, when you get your degree, we're going to hire you. Awesome. But really they had only hired people with PhDs at that point. So I was like, holy shit, this is a uh, pretty surreal. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. But I think he was just also into bodybuilding. He applied a lot of sports physiology to bodybuilding. So it was just like, it was amazing that he was my professor because I was that kid who was like, wow, I don't see people doing this. Right. And then he's also doing it, but he already has a PhD. And what, I got to learn a lot from what's him. the business model there like? In other words, so they hire you, obviously, as a person who's going to be an advisor, help write stuff. But what's like, what, where do they make their income from? What's the, the business model of the company itself? Yeah, so they started off uh, in CrossFit because people were doing like paleo diets a bunch and yeah. carbohydrates are amazing for performance. So. Oh, uh, you get a bunch of team of sports scientists who are like, listen, carbs are good. Try this. And the CrossFitters are all doing really well. They're placing higher at the games. Right. And, then, and everybody wanted to do our, the RP diet. So they started off with like template based dieting gotcha. and then coaching as well. So they hired three or four coaches up front. And then now I think we have up to like uh, 18 coaches wow. or so. Everybody has a PhD or an RD. Um, I, like I'm pursuing mine still. Yeah, so like how long did they give you to, 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 to get, because I know you have a master's degree, but when did the, how long did they give you once you graduated college to get the other degrees? I'm sure it's in, my, in like the contract that we wrote, but again, yeah. like everybody there is so cool and we're all kind of just friends that it's right. like, listen, Jared, just do this, you idiot, or, or you know, you can't work. I got anymore. you, I got you, I got you. Okay, okay, right. yeah, well, I got you. So, so when yeah. did you get your master's degree in sports physiology? Uh, to graduated in 18, 17, 18. From what college was that from? Same college that I got my bachelor's from. Okay. I was just like, I just need to get this master's out of the way. I had already basically had master's level knowledge because I was doing everything outside of the, the classroom. Right. So, but it, it focused heavily on exercise metabolism and actually the breakdown of nutrients through exercise and things like that. So oh, that's, it was super that's interesting. Cool. I learned. Yeah, that I sounds interesting. And then what's, what would be the next step? Like, let's say you wanted a PhD. What would you, did you would you have to pick like a specialty? A yeah, thesis? so actually, uh, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, um, who works at Lehman College in New York. Yep. Uh, they sort of have this joint uh, PhD program that I was uh, considered for, which is pretty neat. But he does most of the research in hypertrophy right now. He has a shit ton of publications and, and studies. That's exciting. So, yeah. <clears throat> I would actually be going there to do an uh, exercise phys PhD, but with an emphasis in hypertrophy. Uh -huh. So I'd be like, PhD in hypertrophy, basically. That's Which great, and that's thing. like exactly what you want because that's that's obviously the goal of every person who works out, right? To get the maximum hypertrophy, you know. And they must yeah, exactly. And then I can, you know, <laughs> since I started this enhanced route uh, two years ago, sure. and now I'm a pro, I can then help people <laughs> and like bring the the bro science and kind yeah. of break things down, like you said, break things down and help them understand yeah. so that they can apply it better to their Absolutely. training. Because nobody's going in there and thinking, you know. I am not doing everything I can possible to grow tissue. Right. It's just for a lot of people, the only thing they know is hard work. So a lot of these guys grew up similar to how I grew up uh -huh. and it was just hard work that got them out of there. Sure. So they just keep that mindset. It's like, no, all I need is hard work, hard work, hard work, and I gotta keep getting better and better. It's like, right. that's not how it works, but I understand why you see it that way. Here's, sure. here's what works a little better. Try it out, see if you like it. So oh. it's, I wanna just be able to help people. Absolutely, like and look, you know, I, that's why I got you on the show because I'm like finally someone I can speak to on an intellectual level that's not just spewing out you know quote bro science type stuff right. and you know obviously we're going to do future, a lot of future guru talks with you about some of the stuff to help get this information out there because it's important and I think that if we can change how people approach the sport of bodybuilding to get maximum benefits out of it even if it's small tweaks here and there because that makes a big difference in the long run because we're not we're not talking about a sport that's six months and you're done you you're doing this for 10 20 years obviously yeah. if you can maximize what you're doing you're going to get much better result at a quicker pace and uh that's why I, I really love what you're doing i think it's great stuff yeah i think that's why a lot of the the natural bodybuilding scene uh 
they see a lot of progress of it first because they're all trying to learn this type of stuff. Right. And uh, companies like 3D and J were around for a really long time. Like they're kind of like a like a brother sister company to us. Sure. Eric Helms is their head PhD guy. Him and our him and Mike Israel they do a lot of uh, podcasts together, mm -hmm. and they're always kind of disagreeing on minutia. And people are like, "Ha, ah, you guys fight each other," and then we're just kind of like, "No, we're all friends here. We just disagree on this little right, concept." Right, right, right. <laughs> what What would you say if I had to just just because I know I know my audience? If you had to throw one major thing out there, one thing that you've learned, okay, through this whole process, yeah. that people could benefit from just one tidbit i know there's a, i know it's all integrated but one tidbit where you say you know what this is so obvious i don't know why i so many people make this mistake what would it be yeah sure heavy compound basics through full range of motion with a very good intent that's it amen i agree yeah back to the basics yep. heavy compounds full range of motion with, with a good intent and good technique don't be Lowering the eccentric without control, that's how you tear pecs yep. don't, or, or quads. Don't be bouncing out of the hole and squat super hard. Just like kind of control the entire yep. range of motion. Go through the full range of motion that your, your body can, and that might be working around injuries or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then just make sure you have a, a very large intent to move. Yep. Um, st stick with that and you're going to be good. And then just be specific. So the very first principle in, hyper, in, in, in sports physiology is specificity. Mm -hmm. Like we're not going and running marathons to build hypertrophy. So the most specific thing you can do for hypertrophy is training with heavy compound basics and the seven to 20 rep range and just going over that over a long period of time. Don't be getting caught up in this like maxing, maxing out and showing off to your bros. Like <laughs> I'm on a bunch of trend now. Watch this one rep max deadlift. Let's, let's fucking quit. Stop doing that shit. <laughs> Stick to the basics. You, you know what? You just validated my whole lifting career in, 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 in five seconds. So that perfect. That, yeah, yeah, you were fucking huge. Why, yeah, why did people yeah. just not look? <laughs> but you know what? I used to when I would work out, truth be told, whether it be squats or, or benching, people would come over. And they would actually try to help me because they thought I was stuck because I would I would lower the weight on the on the, on the bench press so deliberately and control awesome. that eccentric and really squeeze that positive out with with and people would think I was stuck at the bottom because I was I was actually controlling four oh five on an incline you know and so Amazing. but yeah. that's what works and I would always do f full range motion I'd see these guys they're coming that six inches off their chest they're not even touching their chest with the bar and i'm like of course they have no develop they don't they're lacking development in their pec muscles because they're missing half the movement 100 percent. And, and people get really caught up in like well i don't i can't touch my chest i can't do this i lack stretch. mobility. <laughs> stretch training with weights is stretching under load so when people are like how do i get more flexible i'm like uh do a straight leg deadlift <laughs> Touch the fucking ground with the bar, and your hamstring will be flexible. They're also gonna be really fucking big and strong. Like right. there you go. No, nope, you're 100 percent right. I'm glad you said yeah. that. Thank you. I'm, you like imagine, I said, you validated. Imagine you putting on 600 and half repping it. You know what I mean? You probably could have. So like people just need to set the damn ego away. It's like I, ha, when I see guys do that shit because I can bench 405 really controlled too. Yeah. Like like we talked about, I was just naturally fucking yep. strong. I just want to put it on the bar and be like, watch. And do it, and yeah. be like, nobody's impressed in the gym. Yeah. Take weight off, <laughs> so you don't fucking hurt yourself. Yeah, you're right. And you know what the funny thing was? I wasn't naturally strong like you were, but I built that strength because I trained with full range motion, controlling 100%. the weight, and as I got bigger, I got stronger. And that, yeah. and that just goes to show you, you don't have to be naturally strong. Matter of fact, I think sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a curse to be that strong. Because sometimes you get so strong that you could actually, you know, hurt yourself, you know. Um, yeah, and you actually can do less training volume. You get yeah. systemically fatigued faster. You have to get rid of shit like deadlifting because it's too systemically fatiguing right. for you. Right. So it's like, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. That's why doing four range of motion is so smart because it limits that that systemic fatigue. Yeah. So you can actually do longer training blocks. Sure. Because if you're, you're somebody deadlifting like 700 pounds for reps and and it's not exactly that great a technique. You're slamming it off the ground. Yeah. You build a shitload of systemic fatigue and you run into injuries very quickly. That, and there's a saying that I, I love that stuck with me and it's just basically, if you don't do fatigue management periods and deloads, then your body's just gonna do it for you. And those are the types yeah. of guys that run into injuries and shit like that. Like, yeah. you know, I deload once every five to six weeks, which is a lower volume period. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're just kind of, I can go in, I can create my variations or keep my uh, whatever exercises are working yeah. well for me. And there are guys that just don't ever do that and then they get hurt and then their body makes them take a fucking six week off yep. period because, yep. well, wow, you just blew your knee. Yep. 
You're a hundred percent. You're a hundred percent right. And you know what? I was fell victim to that during my career, where I would never let off the gas sometimes, and and sometimes I had to get, you know, humbled by the gods above who gave me a little bit of a, a tweak here and there, and then I would have to just it would force me to stay out of the gym or at least lower my weights and volume because. I was injured in a sense, you know, not yeah. majorly injured, but injured enough that I, I had to take a step backwards a little bit. And like you said, as soon as I, I took it easy for six, four to six weeks, I got even stronger after that. So if I would have just known to do that, you know, with because I had a schedule that allowed me to do that, I probably would have made even better progress, you know. Yeah, 100 percent. That's periodization, man. Just yeah. Going through periods when you know that you should going through certain and there's a lot of science behind like time periods and when you probably should and yeah. when uh, training volume is getting stale and there are markers for that. Um, there are specific reasons like fast switch uh, fibers converting to slower twitch fibers and you mm -hmm. probably want to grow your fast switch fibers so back off here. There are all kinds of things that I could see and talk about of why we should do what we do. But it, yeah, it's, with the basic outline of periodization exactly if you you know when those periods are then you're just going to make better long-term progress. It's just that small sacrifice of right. now versus later that right. people can't, it's investing. Like I said, with schooling, it was just investment. Yep. And I understood how that worked and I did it. <laughs> you got, yeah, you so got to have trust in the process that that's the right way to do it. Do you guys uh, ever test like C-reactive protein and, and, and inflammatory markers in the body? Yeah, there are tons of people that do. Uh, it wasn't my specific studying, mm. uh, especially not my master's degree. I mean, just in terms of training, like let's see, maybe the body, the test to see if the body's maybe in an over-inflamed state, let's go test C-reactive or any of the other inflammatory markers and use that as, as, a, a, as a gauge to when maybe you should take a step back or, or not. Uh, I go over time courses and, and what we know to be uh, pretty accurate as far as the data goes. Uh, because isn't that, because it, the reason I ask you that is, isn't everyone individualistic? I'm sure Ronnie Coleman's uh, ability to, you know, get through, you know, more volume over a longer period of time is and still recover is better than what mine was. My recovery was always terrible, so I always oh, took yeah, way no, more time. That's, yeah, that's highly genetic, and yeah. uh, that just goes into genetics in general. Like his his uh, joint and tendon structure. Um, just how well he was able to handle systemic fatigue in general, right. because not everybody's the same with that. Um, so how do you measure take, that? In other words, how do you quantify that on a, on a person specific basis? Um, there, there are different ways you can do it in a lab setting. There, there are different types of fatigue. And even one of those is like glycogen depletion. So you can measure glycogen depletion in a lab uh -huh. and you can measure uh, markers. Like you said, you can measure proteins in the bloodstream. So there are tons of ways that, the uh, the scientists in the labs do that. And, and hopefully in my PhD, I'll, I'll get a lot of more hands-on experience. With I was gonna say, stuff. do you think that, that we'll get to a point where we'll be able to say, okay, go for these tests in the lab, the blood test markers, and we, based on this, this testing you're doing every four to six weeks, we can then know what the next periodization program should be or when we, because you're, you're, you've created a, a modicum of, of different, you know, cycle mini cycles or whatever however you break that down I, I forget exactly how you said you say it. but it's it's basically the same mini cycles for everyone everyone's going to be have a little bit of variability in there and and i would think that if you have blood markers to kind of go off of that might even make it even more specific long term potentially i think fortunately uh to to, to just mitigate all that the crazy uh, cycle process yeah we have meta analyses that tell us what's probably best for most people. Yeah. Um, so like a 16 to 20 week high volume period is probably the most that somebody wants to go through there. Cause there are, there are anecdotal markers that you can use like, Oh, I'm not getting the pump very well anymore. Right. Um, I feel like I can grind through reps a lot easier. What's that about? Maybe you're converting a lot of faster fibers, uh, slower twitch fibers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm super fatigued all the time. My performance is not going up anymore. Things like that. So right. there are anecdotes that we can use. Uh, so empirical, that we empirical evidence, we call it. Yeah. 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 So, um, fortunately, like I said, there are meta analyses and there are ways that we can uh, figure that stuff out without having to go do fancy tests. But the fancy tests are cool because that's how we figure out the meta analysis data. Right. That's how we figure out all the study data. So, I, I'd like eventually at some point there to be like some kind of, and I, it won't be me developing, it'll be you developing like a checklist <laughs> here. Here, you go for these, go get this blood work done. Let's get, when I get it back, I'll analyze it for you and then I can give you the next, you know, what your next 
uh, six or eight week cycle is going to be of what you're going to do in the yeah, gym. I'm unsure if it'll ever come to that point, but I, muscle biopsies are really cool in the, in the lab because you can see. Right, they hurt. What's going on. They hurt. No one wants this. I don't want to get my muscle cord out of it, you know. <laughs> right, so that's why there's studies in the lab. So, because that's the one thing you'd have to do to know if you are in, in that right. sort of. Of course, system. of course. All right, let, have let, let's yeah. just take yeah. the next step. I want to I want to just talk about your pro card victory this past yeah. at Nationals because that was uh, that was awesome. Obviously, now how uh, when you, I, I don't know when exactly you started training, but how many years was it officially before you got your pro card, from starting uh, pro card competing? and natural bodybuilding? So actually, technically, the first competition I ever did, yeah, uh, I should have got a pro card in men's physique, because uh, I won the overall men's physique at a natural bodybuilding show. Okay, but I think I was just too young, or they didn't like me, or there's something weird. I don't remember exactly what happened, but basically they were like, "Don't worry, you don't got to pee in a cup," and I was like, uh, "Okay," and I left, and I just never heard from them until wow. I competed. Couple years ago. I was kind of pissed. They must that. have heard. They must have seen that last name Feathers. They're like, oh, uh, uh, no, we're not giving oh, him the pro card. <laughs> that's that asshole from Missouri or yeah. Bowling Green. Uh, yeah, no. So then I competed for a good three or four years after that. I think uh, 2016, I got my pro card okay. in natural bodybuilding. Right. I competed in 2017 with a couple of pro shows. I won a pro show, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm a high level natural bodybuilder. It's right. time to make the leap. So like gotcha. the very end of 2017, 2018 is when I crossed over. And then uh, I competed in the Arnold Classic. I competed in Junior USAs. And then I did fine. Uh, I got sixth out of like 38 at the Arnold, which was cool. Uh, right. Fuck my peak up though, because I was peaking like a natural. It's completely different. Sure. <laughs> um, and then I did nationals and I, I won nationals. So you, it, it was a pretty, once you switched over to NPC, it was, it was pretty quick for you. Yeah, it was, it was immediate. Like, yeah. you know. I, you were ready. Well, you yeah, know what it is? Sure. I always say natural bodybuilding, the best natural bodybuilders are almost like plug and play into the classic sure. physique system, you know, pretty much. Yeah, it's like I said, when you're, when you're a strong person, it's going to be obvious. Um, I can't remember who was it. Uh, somebody, a strong man. He, the first time he ever deadlifted, he was like 19. He did six, 600 pounds. Wow. He walked into the gym one day. Uh, it was after after football practice. And someone was like, how much can you deadlift? He's like, what's a deadlift? <laughs> Showed him. He did 600 pounds. It's like, when you know you're going to be good at something, you just know. Yeah. Like, I have uh, similar genetics to, like, West African descent, like super spherical muscle bellies, right. big good. bubbly quads. So I'm very fortunate that I have good genetics. Yeah. And whenever I was on stage, I was like, I look different than these people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I look right. different than some of these guys up here. We were you upset you didn't win the overall at the Nationals? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the guy that won, I didn't even see him. So I was worried about the, the Class D winner. So. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know what? You know, it, the, the overall is tough because you're taking a bunch of guys of different height and yeah. you're putting up against each other. And you know what? It's Some judges like some the apples, some uh, apple, judges like oranges. And it, yeah. it, sometimes you don't get a, a very good... Um, you don't get the right decision because of that, because there's too many judges voting for too many different people. And I think that's probably what happened. Now, moving forward into 2021 now, now that you have the pro card, do you have, I, I mean, I know you got a lot of stuff going on with work and, and, and degrees. Are you planning on competing as a pro this year? Yeah, I'm making my pro debut in Dallas in 13 weeks. So oh, cool. going to Hawaii was cool because I was like, I can prep out there and I can check out the island and see how everything is. Now, yeah, what, how did you, no, you, you were living it all over the place. You lived in Vegas, we know that. Why Hawaii of all places? Because that's pretty far out there, you know. Yeah, so uh, I was going to go to Thailand for a little bit, actually. And Thailand's still closed because of COVID. So I was uh, like, I have to go. Okay. I, mean, I got to I got to travel a little bit. Yeah, um, Yeah. I mean, I'm just trying everything. Like, growing up the way I did and then doing what I'm doing now, it's so fucking surreal that yeah. I just I just want to see everything. What part of Hawaii are you in? I'm in Honolulu right now. I'm actually on Waikiki Beach. Nice. Uh, it was a terrible idea. I got attacked by a homeless guy yesterday. Did you really? Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, he hit me with a broom. <laughs> he must have known the Feather family. He said, oh, I, I there so. he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'll probably go to all the other islands while I'm here and see how they are. Maui is great. I, I'll hook you up with a really good, uh, my friend Tom Okerman, who's a great massage therapist out there if you want to. Cool. If you go to Maui, awesome. you let me know. I'll, I'll, I'm telling you, you'll be like, this guy's awesome. He, and I'm sure he's watching this. He's probably like, thanks for the vlog. <laughs> he's great. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's one of the best massage therapists. 
seriously. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to check out Maui for sure. So that's a, It's a fun island. It's very laid back. There's really not much to do there, but you can work out and relax and kind of just chill and be in like a zen-like state all the time there. You know? yeah, I just I just figured there's 24 hours in all the islands, so I got a 24 hours. Like, there, you go. there you go. Now, do you, th you plan on staying there, or are you going to move someplace else after Hawaii? Uh, I'm going to go back to Vegas, drive to San Antonio, where I used to live. Right. Um, and then stay there for two or three weeks until my show. Mm -hmm. And then probably come back to Vegas and compete in Tijuana okay. uh, a month later. And then after that, I don't know. Just going with the flow. What, what, <laughs> what are they having? Another Tijuana Pro Show? Uh, I don't remember what it's called. Mexico something oh. Super Show. The last time I went to the Tijuana Pro Show there, I went to the, the pharmacy there. And I did a little, I don't know if you've ever seen that video. I did a video like... Uh, of like, you know, what anabolics they have in the Tijuana pharmacy. Oh, it was like oh, the most awesome. popular video that we've ever done or something like that. <laughs> oh God, that's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to go watch that. It's funny because they had the, they had the in-store stuff that, you know, was very expensive. And then they took me in the back alley where they have the, the good stuff, you know. And, and they, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to watch that. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta <laughs> go watch that video. People love that video. But hey, you know, Jared, it, it was really good to talk to you. I, I love your, your story, your, a success beyond successes uh, coming from where you came from and I want to just congratulate you on all your accolades and I'd love to get you back to do a guru talk and get more in depth in the periodization programs that you've set up and and talk training because I know our, our audience loves that stuff and I, I love the science of it and quantifying it and I'll probably learn a few things from you along the way as well and um, you know if we can educate people and pass on this information hey that's what it's all about at the end of the day absolutely I agree scientific thinking 13 weeks, we'll see him on a pro stage for the first time. Ooh. Hey, you know what? I know, I know you're obviously completely bit by the iron bug. Um, do you see yourself uh, being on an Olympia stage at the end of this uh, year? That's the plan. All right. I, I'm trying <laughs> to see where your head's at. I'm glad that you were so uh, confident about that answer. That's good. That's good. That's a good sign. That's the plan. <laughs> I, I'm going to see how I'm doing. Uh, like my structure, I'm 5'10 and a half. My structure's obviously built for the open. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have calves that are bigger than most open guys. So yeah, if I could just take two pounds and put that on my back, it'd be great, but I can't. <laughs> so uh, I'll see if I'm placing top five by the Tijuana show. Right. And if not, I'm just gonna move to the open. That's I got you. Well, you're only 28, so you might as well at this point. Otherwise, you're gonna be holding yourself back pretty much, you know? Yep, so we'll see. All right, good luck and uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. All right, that's gonna take us to the end of another episode of Live With. I'm Dave Palumbo for Jared Feather. We'll see you next time.